we're going to make paper masks today. And the mask I'm going to show you is a Miss Piggy mask. Miss Piggy was one of my favorite characters when I was a kid. We're going to start with a basic paper mask. You can buy them at uh, Blick. And I'm going to remove this whole section of the mask because I need to add a snout for Miss Piggy's nose. So I'm going to just cut down through the eye openings on both sides and um, through the top part of the mouth and remove that whole piece. You might want to do the same if you plan to really change the front part of your mask, like if you have a horse or something that has a muzzle or something that has a beak, that might be a good idea. Okay, so here's the snout that I made. I'm going to show you how I made it first. So I drew the shape of the snout on a thin piece of cardboard and cut it out, but I needed to make it three-dimensional. So what I did was I cut a thin strip of cardboard and bent it so that I could attach it all the way around that snout piece so that it would stand up from the mask. And I did that by applying very carefully some hot glue. Remember, hot glue is super, super hot. If you get it on your fingers, wipe them off immediately on your table. So I'm gonna just press and hold to keep it in place. It takes a couple seconds for the hot glue to set. So in the meantime, for something like this, you have to really be patient and just hold it in place until it firms up enough for you to move on to the next section. So you really just wanna do one section at a time, add more glue and wait, and then add more glue and just keep going until it's totally finished. So that's the process. And then obviously you would trim off the excess. But now I have a three-dimensional snout and I've drawn on some nostrils so that I can remember to paint those on later. I'm gonna press down into the mask to kind of flatten it a little bit and add a little bit of hot glue at the top and the bottom just to set that snout in place. I'm gonna to have to do more down the road to really get it securely on the mask, but for now I just kind of need it to be in place. Now I'm gonna make hinges out of duct tape. So I'm gonna put half of that piece of tape on the snout and half on the mask. And I'm going to burnish the tape onto the mask by rubbing it. That just ensures that it's a really secure attachment. So again, I'm making a hinge with half of the tape on the snout and half on the mask. That ensures a really strong connection. And then I'm gonna do that all the way around the snout. So the more places where you have um, tape, the more secure your attachments are gonna be. So next I'm gonna do some eyes and I've used a tennis ball that I've cut in half. I'm just gonna use some hot glue to attach it. And that's really all I need because of the way that it hits the mask when I attach it. It really like, there are lots of points of contact. So I don't need anything else. So there's the other one and I'm good to go. Next, I'm gonna show you how to make ears and how to really make sure they're securely attached. So again, I'm gonna use a separate piece of cardboard and I've drawn one ear shape. I'm gonna cut it out and then trace that shape onto the next part of the cardboard so that the two ears are identical. Then I am going to use my fingers to bend the cardboard so that it's more of a curved looking ear. I don't really want it to look two dimensional. I want it to look three dimensional. So I'm actually using the palm of my hand too, just to press that cardboard in. Now they look curved and they look much more three dimensional. Now I'm gonna cut into the mask at the top where I plan to place those ears. So I'm gonna make a little mark on both sides where I plan to attach each ear. With my pencil, I'm kind of using the ear so that I know how big the um, opening needs to be. And then I'm gonna cut into the mask with a small pair of scissors. I'm gonna be very careful because these scissors are super sharp. Okay, now I'm gonna pop those ears through the opening that I made. I might make, need to make some adjustments. Then I'm gonna flip the mask over and I'm gonna start gluing them on the inside of the mask. So I'm gonna take my hot glue and I'm just gonna add a little bit where those two pieces are connected, and then I'll do the same thing on the outside of the mask too. So now I'm gonna make a lip, and I used part of a toilet paper roll because it's already kind of curved, and I knew that that bottom lip needed to be pretty curved, and I cut it into um, the right shape, really kind of bent it before I attempted to attach it, 
and then made sure that it was the right size. And then I'm gonna apply a little bit of hot glue, again, just to set it. So I know that I'm gonna to need to do a lot of hinging to get it totally connected to this mask because there are a whole bunch of gaps. So I'm gonna add a little bit more hot glue and I'm going to kind of bend it and keep my fingers there until that glue sets because otherwise it'll just pop right off. And then I'll do that on the other side too. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more toilet paper tube just to make that lower lip come out a little bit further on both sides. Toilet paper tubes are super, super useful for creating all kinds of different things on your mask, from mustaches to lips to eyebrows, you name it. Okay, lower lip is done and pretty secure. My last step is to hinge some duct tape to make sure that it's totally connected and that I've also filled in any gaps that are between the lip and the rest of the mask so that it's ready to be painted. So ta-da! Here she is in her final form. I created hair for her that I painted before I attached and the hair is just made out of cardboard and then she's got a nice paint job. <laughs>